Please keep your children with you at Ooh. all times. Well, I know somebody got that. Right, I have no idea how today's video is going to work out. I have a bunch of stuff I want to show. It's a, it's a decent hodgepodge, and as a matter of fact, we've already had one awesome sale from this before I could even get to filming, and we're going to start off with that right now. All right, this is the item in question. This is a Grundig Satellite 700 World Radio, and I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I did a lot of research in the store to find out exactly what this thing is. Now, first off, I want to point out that I only even looked at this. I don't usually do radios because, look, if you saw this in a store, you got to think there's something different about this. Just I said, is this a frequency scanner? Is this a police scanner? Is it a, what is this thing? It turns out it's a radio that apparently will work in any location in the world. It gets AM uh, signals, FM, long range or long wave and short wave signals as well. It's got a huge antenna. It's got a lot of stuff going on that I didn't even understand. I had to do some research on a website off of Google to find out. But what I did do in the store was A, plug it in and make sure it worked, and B, did the sold comp research, and I saw ones had sold for well over $200. This seemed to be in better condition than all the other ones, and it came with the original power cord as well. And as you can see, it actually has, well, this is the UK plug, and I, oh, it fell down here. Oh, hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie airplane we're going to look at in a minute. Um, it has the adapter, so this obviously works in the States. So I turned it on in the store. I got some noise. I said, let's just take it home and test it out. Didn't even say, I paid $24.99 for this. And a lot of people might scoff at doing something like that, but by the time I got home, one another one had actually sold for $300 that night. Now, I didn't think about this until afterward. We turn the camera around for a second. Is I, I didn't think about this, but I wonder if uh, this is going to Oregon. And I have a good friend in Oregon who like, says the place is in a panic, kind of like they are here in Vegas too and everywhere across the world with this coronavirus stuff. So I'm hoping... The price wasn't inflated because people were um, worried about losing touch with what's going on in the outside world. If they get quarantined, I don't know. I originally asked, uh, based on the comps, $300 plus $25 for shipping because I absolutely expected to have watchers and I wanted to have some wiggle room. And yeah, sure enough, I listed this the night I got it, which was two nights ago. That morning, it already had like about 70 views and two watchers. I decided to send an offer on this guy. I sent an offer of... Uh, 275. I allowed counter offers, which is something you can do now. Sorry about my hand getting in the video there. Uh, which you can do when you send an offer to the buyer. And they countered back at just 25 bucks less at 250 plus the shipping. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to sell this now. I mean, I just basically bought it less than 12 hours ago. So did sell it for 250 plus $25 for shipping because it's going someplace relatively close to me, this guy is going to net me about $200 profit in the end after the original cost, the fees, and the shipping. So this was a heck of a find. And it almost led to some bad choices because, because when I find something like this it, early on in a, a sourcing session, it basically makes me feel much looser, uh, much more loosey-goosey on what I'm buying. So I'll buy a lot more things knowing I have so much profit here. But let me just step back and show you because this Barbie airplane you're going to see next, um, I actually paid $30 for that. So this entire stuff, all this stuff that's actually for sale, which you'll see, came to $98. And with this one already being sold and this item itself making me $200 profit, that profit already covers everything everything else. So I don't care if the smaller items only sell for $10, $15, and I only make between $5 and $10 profit on each, because actually, if I paid $2 for this, and it sells for $12, I would normally say, oh, okay, I made $6 profit in the end. But to me, that original $2 I invested is actually profit too, because this guy already paid for it. Does that make sense? I kind of hope it does because I look at my trips into a store, each store individually as one big purchase. And I look at how much I've made from those items total. So those little guys, even at only like five or $6 profit a piece will add up to probably 25% of the profit I made on the radio. And now I've increased my profits by 25% just by snagging those smaller items. So let's jump to the other biggie because this has a story behind it too, which I'll try and make a bit shorter. 
Uh, as you can see, I paid $30 for this Barbie Pink Passport uh, jet airplane. Now, I'm the one who opened this up because I wanted to make sure this wasn't resealed by the store. It might have been these big boxes are sometimes taped very funky by the manufacturer. I'm not going to pull it all out, but you can see the airplane is in there. It looked in really great condition, although I did see a couple of marks uh, in the plastic. I'm not sure if that's from the manufacturer or it was pulled out but never used. But all of the accessories on the inside, we got serving trays, mugs, cups, chairs. There's two bags full of stuff. Those were factory sealed, never used. So this thing is pretty much in new open box condition. Now, it's huge though. And I'm actually going to probably try and sell this locally. But I spent about 15 minutes on this, which was far longer than I wanted to think about it. But given knowing what's going on with that radio, I said, yeah, let's just pull the trigger. Going to probably try and sell this locally because the sold comps online for this one are about 125 to 150. But by my best estimates, after shipping, even like a FedEx shipping on this and fees, I'm probably gonna be all in closer to $70 on this. So if I sell it for 150 online, I'm still looking at about $80 profit. But even if I scale that back and assume 50, to me, that's still worth it. But this is gonna be a challenge too because I don't normally do something this big. Like I said, I might do it local where I could sell it a bit cheaper and um, save on those shipping fees. Uh, it's the new things I want to branch out into this year. Normally, I hate doing local sales, but I've actually done my first one. It worked out smoothly. Probably going to try and do some more, and this is probably going to be one of the first candidates for that. I don't remember. If I paid $8 for this one, then this means this is probably selling for at least, by my best estimate, closer to 70 if not more, without the remote control. But it was in really good condition. I always pop a cassette tape in in the store, uh, play it, make sure it ejects a couple of times, doesn't jam up or chew the tape. I make sure the screen, all the LEDs light up. Sometimes I've had dead LEDs, so you couldn't read the numbers. And uh, make sure to fast forward and rewind. However it works on this unit, it happens to be a jog dial uh, work, and the unit doesn't uh, sound bad or stick. And I will honestly say, not to be gross, I would uh, take a whiff inside too and make sure it's not from a smoking home where that stuff is gonna smell bad and also possibly be uh, gunked up on the inside. So um, yeah, we're looking at probably, let's just say another 70 bucks there on the total sale. So for me, that's gonna be about 35 plus profit uh, in the end on that one. Kind of grabbed this on my third trip around the store. My senses were tingling and there was more stuff to find and actually there certainly was. Franklin Mint Precision Model, uh, what's that say there, collection, uh, the armor collection. And boy, I'm going to boff this one. And I'm part German, I should know, but it's, isn't it Luftwaif is the uh, airplane? And uh, so a German airplane. This looks pretty much new in the package. I took it out. It looked like it was never removed from the box. Oh, the box has, you can see the shelf damage on here, which I will mention. But didn't find this specific model, but this collection, this series of similar ones, were selling for at least $40. So Google probably thought they had a toy airplane on their hands and priced it at three bucks. And this is actually gonna be some good profit for me. I've sold planes and cars like this before. And honestly, whenever I've come across these, I don't think I've ever seen Google price them at an uh, appropriate price at all. And if you ever wonder why uh, Google does what they do, Someday everything will make perfect sense. All right, now on to the random stuff. This is the more hodgepodgey stuff, but these are the things I sell consistently day in and day out, and they all add to the bottom line, and that's why I like to show these kind of hauls to you folks. So we'll go with those ribbons. These are ribbons that go into, I've actually sold this unit before, uh, a couple years ago. Um, they print directly onto a CD like a, like a printer would. It's like an ink ribbon, obviously, like a, I guess that's more like what a, like a P-Touch labeler would be. Uh, two of these, they were $1.99 a piece. They're, even though this one's taped up, it was just torn. This is still brand new on the package. They're looking at around $13 to $15 each if I really pushed my luck on it. But because they're so light, I'm just going to sell them as a lot of two for a little bit cheaper because they'll ship out for the same rate at one or two. But rather than sell two separately and make an extra six bucks, but then lose another three in uh, shipping costs, I'm just going to bundle them together as two for about 25 bucks and try and move them fast. A lot of these small items you're seeing are going on my second eBay store that's been kind of sitting dormant because uh, I want to build it up and be able to get top rated seller status on it and um, be able to use that one as well. So I got to start showing activity and numbers so my metrics look good. All right, I'm an 
Angels fan. I always have been from back in my days in California. I might actually keep this or give it to somebody, but this guy is absolutely a victim of the, wow, I'm making some profits over here. This is buy everything syndrome. So I paid $1.99 and there actually was a sold comp of $12.99. Um, I just kind of wanted him. I don't know. But Angels Rally Monkey in a Hawaiian shirt. I guess this was a giveaway one night from this company, Sungevity. This was the exact one I saw sold. So I grabbed him too. Even if I sell him, throw him in a poly mailer, he's going to be less. I'm going to guess. Wait, let's guess. I want to say he's three ounces. Is that even possible? That, that's that light? Wow, that's that's too much reselling. Okay, so he's about three ounces. So yeah, I throw him in a poly mailer or a bubble mailer. He should get there fine. And he's going to go for a four ounce rate. So, you know, small quick profits here and there somewhere. It might sit for a while, but baseball season is coming up. So it's time to buy all that swag. Pewter miniatures for online, not online, I'm sorry, for tabletop games, role-playing games. I mean, not that I personally would know about those things, but I've never heard of Riot Quest. This is Dr. Stigius. Stigius. Uh, these models, people like to put them together and paint them. I was never good at that, but they're used for tabletop games where you can move the miniatures around. Uh, people like to get the whole sets. I don't know anything about this one at all, except that it had a barcode and I scanned it. And there weren't a whole lot online, but I did see sold comps for around 18 to 20. I forget if I paid a $1.99 or $2.99 for this, but again, I like things like this because one of the reasons why I won't do a whole lot with clothing is because I suck at descriptions with stuff like that, aside from the fact the whole market is saturated. But if somebody doesn't care about a brand and they just want a long sleeve blue striped shirt and they search for that, I mean, how many overwhelming options are there going to be and how much is your item going to get lost in the shuffle? I'm not knocking selling clothes. I just don't have a, a taste or a desire for it. Something like this, though, someone is specifically looking for Riot Quest figures or better yet, Dr. Stigius. Stigus, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, so they're going to be looking for this directly, and it's going to be much easier for items like this to be found. And that's what I think is a benefit to what I sell, is people are looking specifically for what I have, not a generalization. I like to keep my ink uh, expired no more than three years. So this guy is just about coming up on a year and a half expired. And remember, expired doesn't mean that the ink is suddenly bad or won't print. It's just... HP wants to keep you buying more ink because this is where all their profit is. It's like the old analogy, give them the razors for free and sell them the blades because that's where all the money is. So selling you the ink is where the stores and the manufacturers make their money. But why would somebody buy expired ink? It's because these cartridges generally have microchips on them that signal to the printer that the cartridge is good to use or authentic. And a lot of companies who do ink refilling will like to buy these, refill them with ink, and that way they know they're selling their customer a cartridge that will register in the system. And also, uh, these will still work. For 99 times out of 100, they will still work. Um, anyway, all that rambling, I know I paid $4.99 for this, which was a bit more than uh, I would like to pay, but again, uh, good find syndrome. Let's just buy it anyway. It's gonna sell for about 18 or 20 bucks, so make about six to eight dollars profit on there. Again, this is gonna be a second store item, something easy to list, and I know people are looking for to get some activity going on there. I would never watch this, but first and second season of Kendra on top, uh, they were actually bundled together in the store for $5.99. Amazon had, I think, season one for 17 and season two for 15, perhaps. So I'm actually gonna bundle them both together at 25 bucks and just try and move them. Again, activity for the first store. But something about too, when you're looking at, uh, you know I like to only find the sealed media if possible. I, I always like when it actually has the sticker on top too so you know for sure that this hasn't been resealed by anybody or the store. Because I have actually seen now, I think it's Savers, has been doing a lot of resealing of board games and media. And you can generally tell because it's never as clean cut on the edge and folded over like these are. Um, but I hate to list something new only to find out that it was actually resealed by the store because I look stupid and I probably get a return. Won't dwell on Needlepoint, but this is a pillow kit. I've never actually sold one like this before. They wanted $8 for this, but it was half off. And I decided to buy it for four bucks just because it's older, it's vintage. There's no UPC on it, which if I remember correctly, what, things without a UPC are generally from the mid-70s or before. 
Uh, did not find this specific model online, so I simply typed in Busilla uh, pillow kit, and I saw a lot. And they were ranging from $15 to $28. So whatever, I threw it in the cart, and I'm probably only going to ask like 20 bucks on this, just because there were none like it. And I guess, yeah, it's technically vintage, and some people might want to do something that you can no longer get. All right, getting towards the end. Thanks for sticking with me again, folks. Uh, this is a Logitech G600 gaming mouse. It's wired. Cord is in really good condition. I sometimes forget to check that, so if you're looking at mice, make sure the cord isn't frayed or chewed or damaged anywhere. That actually happens more often than you would uh, expect. Gaming mouse, because it has a ton of buttons you can assign functions to. Um, I did test this out on my own system, and when I buy mice, uh, you know, I make sure they're in really good condition. I definitely disinfect them. I make sure that th this one hasn't been cleaned yet, so don't call me a liar yet. Uh, but I made sure it worked. All the buttons work, and these have a lot of buttons to test, and it all seemed good. I actually thought this would be worth more like 25 to 30, but in reality, the used version is going for between 15 and 20. I only pay $1.99. There's still profit here, but you know, I might keep that for myself if it's uh, better than the one I currently have. And then here is the most completely, eh, not sure why I bought it, purchased, and we'll end on that one is these are five inch PVC plastic figures from an anime called Black Butler. Um, I'm not gonna try and pronounce the Japanese version even though I probably could because I will just I don't want to get a uh, strike on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, we got Lady in Red or Madam Rose or Madam Red. okay. So they're five inch figures. I'm gonna sell them individually. I saw one sold for around 13 bucks. I only paid three dollars for both of them. so, uh, if I list them around 13 bucks a piece and I make like five or six bucks a piece total, there's, you know, $12 profit on these guys plus my original three back, which again, once again, covered by this. So really that's profit too, in my mind. Dispute me in the comments if you want, but that's how I look at it. And uh, this will probably sit for a while, but someone will probably try and fill in a collection. So, you know, if this isn't a hodgepodge, I don't know what is, but there's something here for everybody. You got your crafters, electronics junkies, TV watchers, businesses, collectors, sports fans, nerds, and I say that proudly, and people who really need to buy a VCR for some reason, possibly a gift for a friend, which I will not include an invoice if that's the case. Okay, that's gonna be it for this video. I actually have some more sourcing I've done since this one, just yesterday. Have to go through it, possibly make a video on that one too. I wanna make this more frequent, yada yada, I always say that that will be happening. I just definitely did not want to pass up on this one. Not because, hey, look at what I sold. It's because this, all this stuff, that's an absolute hodgepodge that's going to make money. And that's how you succeed at this business. That's how I feel is you can't just go for one thing, one type of merchandise or limit yourself to items that are only going to sell for, you know, um, I have to double my money at least or I'm not going to do it or triple or quadruple. Whatever number works for you, it's the right number. There's no wrong number as long as it's meeting your goals. But for me, I like to get profits wherever I can find. If I see a dollar bill in the street and no one's around, am I going to walk by and say, well, I'm not going to pick it up because it's only a dollar. Of course I'm going to pick it up. A lot of this stuff to me, the effort to sell it is the same as bending over to pick up a dollar bill. And that's what I'm going to do as often as possible. Guys, hope everybody is doing okay. Please stay safe out there. Stay tuned, stay positive, and stay healthy. And keep hustling. I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, you know, all that YouTube stuff. And if you have any questions about this channel, reselling, Las Vegas, feel free to leave me a message in the comments below, or better yet, follow along on Instagram where I try and post positive motivation and interact with my viewers as often as possible. Until next time, keep hustling.